Hello everyone, welcome to a crazy idea I've long had for Kerbal Space Program 1.12, but I haven't decided to do it until now. I've long known that realism overhaul does not actually require a real solar system. It can be used with other systems potentially, but I've never tried that out before. So this time I'm going to see what happens if you mix realism overhaul with the real fuels and real parachutes and all that business with JNSQ, which is a scaled up system. It's, uh, I think, 3.2 times scale, or was it 2.5? It's one of those two. I forget the exact scale. But uh, the question is, will it sort of work? Uh, I mean, uh, to what extent will it work? Now, JNSQ is meant to work with stockish parts, and the stockish parts are a little bit easy for the Kerbin system, the stock scale system, and that's good for beginners. But then once you develop, uh, you want a realistic challenge. And so taking the stock parts and putting them into JNSQ scale is thought to be more challenge, uh, more like a realistic challenge. If we take the parts from realism overhaul and put them in JSQ, JNSQ, they're a little bit easier because everything's a little bit lighter in realism overhaul, actually. Uh, so you might think realism overhaul will be more difficult, but the difficulty in realism overhaul is more subtle, like uh, it's like the docking node uh, attraction and stuff like that, and not having powerful reaction wheels. Uh, it's not really about uh, the masses of things. The masses of things are actually quite nice. So, well, can it work? And what will happen, basically, is the question. Uh, maybe it'll be interesting for, you know, setting up bases on other worlds and complicated systems where uh, if you want to have, like, settlements and stuff like that, it's easier with the realism overhaul parts, actually, uh, weirdly enough. Though, still, there's that subtle complexity of having all those fuels, for instance, and stuff like that. So without further ado, this is a clean install of KSP 1.12.5, and I'm going to fire up CCAN. So I'll provide the full list of things I'm checking off. I'm not going to go through them all, but uh, we actually need to make sure that the Realism Overhaul version that we're going to use is not the latest because I, I want to be able to use my own RP2000 uh, career with it. And that means that the latest version that we can use is 17.4.1. So uh, there was supposed to be a fix for this issue. Uh, that It was supposed to be that there was a toggle that you could add, uh, basically a little tag that you could add uh, to a configuration file to enable other careers except for RP1 but that has not worked out for me. So we're just gonna go with a slightly older version. I don't think that's going, for the enormity of our experiment here, uh, that's not going to be a big difference. Uh, we're doing something crazy in the first place. So anyway, let me continue with this. We're not gonna use Kerbal Inventory System and we've already got Kerbal German Enforcement. We will use Kerbal Constructs, but again, I'll just uh, provide a list and instead of going through all of it, mainly it's JNSQ and Realism Overhaul. The rest is all icing. Okay, so we have a version of Kerbal Space Program with a very different sort of Kerbin in the background. It does have clouds, that's important. And let's see what's what. So starting new, uh, let's see about career mode first. So I'll just call this career. And then we'll go into sandbox to see all the other stuff. But let's say indestructible facilities and all the all the difficulty things. Well, that makes it a little bit easier potentially, but okay. And then KOS I like to have on archive anyway. So I think that's it. But I definitely don't expect everything to work out right or not the way I want it to work out. I probably should have put Kerbal Construction Time just for the heck of it. That might make things better. But anyway, we have clouds, though probably not the implement implementation of clouds I'd like. Um, RSS Visual Enhancements looks a lot better than what we tend to get around here. Um, I guess this is how... I thought there were extra buildings or something, but we'll have to see. The tech tree is community tech tree, so it's got all those things. But right now, the Mark 1 pod is still at start, right? 
But I do seem to have my parts. I added my small rockets pack and my sure strut engine pack. So we've got little CubeSat parts now. And let's take a look at, well, actually, let's pick up a contract first. Though honestly, maybe I should just sandbox it, uh, this particular install. Find scientific data. Okay. Okay, well, we have my sounding rocket core for my small rockets pack, also the CubeSat things. For some reason, the music is playing, even though I'm pretty sure I turned that off. Uh, I just copied over my settings file from a different save. Uh, I'll put my little CubeSat sciences in here. Maybe an extra battery. Well, probably f for this one we don't need an extra battery. And... Oop. Oh, I didn't put action groups. Allow all action groups. So we don't have action groups right now. Well, that's got to be a little bit inconvenient, but we'll deal with it. Okay, uh, we don't have any decouplers. That's something that RP2000 would change. But fine, for the first one, we can put this. Now, my solid rocket motors, the model rocket motors from my small rockets pack, uh, they don't, they just have solid fuel. But if we take a look at like this Star 48, this has HTPB, so that's a real fuel. See, real fuel engines. So real fuels is working in theory. Say I put this one on. And I don't think we need launch clamps. Let's just go outside and fire this. Well, I guess we can do some science here. Log pressure data, transmit. No usable in-range comm devices on this vessel. Uh, I guess we should put an antenna on it. Okay, hold on. Uh, but we'll, we'll just skip that for now. We'll just do our first launch. There we go. Mission satisfied. Still says comms up there though, but I guess those comms allow for control but not transmission. Okay, it properly exploded. As far as comms, there's a helix antenna for CubeSats. This one, I made a few, but the whip antenna would probably be... Let me just verify that the whip antenna would be enough. And then we'll actually go to Sandbox to really see things properly. Okay, now when I open it, can we do those sciences? No. Okay, that's worrying me. Hmm. Cannot transmit science. Well, we got these. <laughs> I guess they're not good enough for transmitting science? I don't remember the stock transmission rules. Uh, why is there a distinction? We got science like that somehow. Okay, uh, let's just... We didn't even do anything for that science. Let's go to the sandbox and see what's what. Okay, still hard, I guess. And we'll still enable comm network because apparently I have some questions about that. Okay, so now we see all the stuff and Realism Overhaul resizes the pods. So now the Mark 1 pod is 2 meters, the Mark 1-3 pod is 4 meters and so forth. So they're bigger now and their masses have... She, why is that 0.04 though? <laughs> Uh, I've got a lot of mods in here that Realism Overhaul wasn't expecting, like the uh, explanatory launch pads and uh, realist, uh, there's this uh, resource thing that was recommended by JNSQ. Um, I wonder if one of those are responsible. Let me bring it out and see what the mass is. 
Okay, down here. One. This is 1.07. I don't know why it says 0.04 there, but it's 1.07. And even if I dump all the resources... It's still over one ton. So, yeah, I don't know what it's saying there, but it's wrong. <laughs> okay, uh, so, yeah. Uh, that's even wrong for this one, but that might not be counting the resources, right? But I've got my Firefly Alpha stuff. The, the tanks now can contain just about any fuel, uh, but but I don't know about liquid... It does still allow liquid fuel and oxidizer, the stock ones. Yes, it does. Okay, so even those, even those, even mono propellant, it's all encompassing, okay? Uh, and we have the procedural tanks as well. So that's good news. So it's compatible with the stock engines if you still have some lingering around for some reason, but uh, we have the, the, the actual stock engines are now reconfigured for real, uh, real fuels. So like this one is AK-27 in Tonka, and it's fairly simple if you've got, you've got some weird fuel like that. You just have a procedural tank with it would attach. That note is weird. Okay, now you just say fill with that fuel mixture and you're all right. So that's okay. And so let's let's play around with one of my little rockets. Let's say we have a tank that's going to be our payload. That's just gonna be a test tank. And my favorite test propellant is Avgas. Because uh, general, it, nothing will be consuming it, and it's easily accessible because it's in the A's. It's at the top of the list, and stuff like that. Okay, so we have a tank of ab gas, and I want the Firefly Alpha, which is part of my small rockets pack. And we don't need to worry about a decoupler here, so I'm not going to use one. It'll just be stuck to the stage. But normally what I would use is the payload adapter. Uh, this one that comes with the small rockets back. And it has tweak scale on it. So you can change it to whatever size you want. It has a control core on it and power and comms in theory. Uh, but you have to be careful with it because, because it has a decoupler on it. MechJeb sometimes doesn't read the right delta V when it's involved, so keep that in mind. Though, not that Delta V's gotta be something that we're short of right now, so uh, let's see what the payload capacity of the Firefly Alpha to orbit would be with J and SQ. So, Lightning Engine and then Reaver Engine. All with the right fuels. So you see kerosene, liquid oxygen, and all. The diameter of this rocket is, I think, well, it's a little bit more than that, like 1.8 meters. I'll say 5,500, let's say. So what's the mass right now? Ah, uh, it's not showing me. <laughs> Come on. Okay, it's 6.35 tons of Avgas, uh, Avgas plus tank. 6.35 tons. And we're a 58 ton rocket. So if we can do this, basically we're back to being like stock. Uh, We've turned JNSQ to stock easiness. I don't know if that's what people wanted, but <laughs> uh, that might be against the principle of JNSQ here. I got everything rotated wrong. Okay, Firefly Alpha. But it's worth keeping in mind that. Our thrust weight ratio with the lightning engine on the second stage is really low, 0.5. So maybe we have to worry about that. Our thrust weight ratio down here isn't great either. 
I've got some extra Delta V. We'll see. It might be tight with this 6.35 tons. Well, we got we got some crumble health messages. Quirk, loner, loneliness, confinement, uh, radiation storm of medium strength. Oh, well, Kerbal Health does Radiation Storms? I thought I got away from that because I didn't have Kerbalism. But now uh, Kerbal Health is doing that. Great. Okay. <laughs> uh, SAS on, throttle is up. And ignition. Oh, I probably should have Smart ASS here. And launch. Up it goes very, very slowly. I should have all my other windows too, but... Here we go. Now, one of the motivations for me doing JNSQ is because I've made terrains for a real solar system like uh, Edwards and Boca Chica and Tampico, and it occurred to me that maybe I could use that technology to renovate a smaller planet like JNSQ, and then those terrains would cover a much larger area of the planet. And make things look good, as opposed to the way they are right now. I want a good looking planet to work with. And really, JNSQ is not completely unrealistic. Like, it's not Earth, right? Kerbin is not Earth. But a planet like this could potentially exist, I guess. I mean, it's not densified to enormous proportions like the stock turbine. The cloud layer really needs work. I don't know what to do about that. I don't know... Is there a way to get RSS visual enhancements for <laughs> JNSQ? Because uh, RSS visual enhancements are very good about the clouds. I'll have to see how... I really am shy about trying to figure out environmental visual enhancements in Scatterer and stuff like that. But... Clearly, this is not optimal. I tried installing an uh, astronomer's visual pack, but that didn't say it, it was not happy with being installed in CCAN. So uh, it said it was not compatible with JNSQ. So I might do that manually or separately, but I remember that there were issues. They're going way too high now. But maybe we want to go high because the upper stage has a 0.5 thrust weight ratio after all. Okay, staging. And fairings. No, well, there's an island airfield way over there. I found out the hard way that if you accidentally put KSC switcher, you end up on this island at the start instead of where we we're supposed to be over there. I don't know why the island runway is that far afield, but maybe that'll be useful for recoveries. I don't have RCS on here right now, so it's rolling out of control at the moment. I mean, we, we have control for the gimbling, we just can't roll. Okay, well, we're going down, and I'm trying to stop that. I, I would do that better if I had all my MechJeb little windows available to me, but just looking at that vertical speed indicator. There's another place. No, that is the island airfield. I thought we would passed it already, jeez. Gerben's sure gotten big! <laughs> It's very different from Kerbin, though. Kerbin, Kerbin. Oh, we lost comms! No, I can still control it with Smart ASS for some reason. <laughs> okay, the comm situation is a little bit peculiar right now. Okay, uh... Oh, right, no comms. Oh, well. Okay, we're gonna overburn. Uh, but, yeah, Smart ASS doesn't pay attention to... Minor things like comms, but we clearly were able to get to orbit and we didn't have too much extra. So it's about 
uh, 6.5 tons capacity, let's say. So, but it worked. It works. We have a very... Well, we have a Firefly Alpha. I was about to say very realistic Firefly Alpha, but we have a Firefly Alpha. And uh, it has done its thing, and its thing is much more powerful than it is in Realism Overhaul, clearly. So, I can't revert, so I'll just leave this up here. So the question is whether this is an, a more appropriate playing ground for trying to make various things compatible with each other. Instead of Realism Overhaul, where it takes a long time to get through things, we can test the compatibility with USI and KSB Interstellar and meshing them together with Realism Overhaul a little bit better than they, well, they aren't meshed together at all right now, but getting things to work together a little bit better in a system where we can conduct missions faster. And so that's the goal. And I don't know if you guys will be interested in seeing a series where things are fairly easy when you've got realism overhaul rockets, right? Uh, we can launch quite a lot of stuff all over the place. Uh, but maybe that's for the best. Maybe having to struggle just to land a Kerbal on Duna all the time. I mean, not Duna, Mars. <laughs> right, I mean... Uh, having to struggle to land a Kerbal on Mars and taking an entire series to ju do just that uh, is not the right way to go. And maybe we can, you know, make that trivial and do more expansive things. It's a thought. So that, that's the idea, that we're going to be far more ambitious with this, having much greater capabilities, but realism in a way uh it's complicated it's complicated but it might look good <laughs> anyway so with those thoughts it was it's just a whim right now it's just a whim and i'll get your thoughts on this meshing of jnsq and realism overhaul i'll put the mod list and the ccan thingamajig in the video description you can suggest things uh, but for now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.